Spending time with artist Dennis Bredo has the character quality somewhere between listening to a TED talk and talking with a best friend. Keen, insightful, and warm, Dennis disarms you with his relatability and at the same time offers a depth of conversation through his deceptively layered pop culture paintings. They are paintings that invite a larger conversation, and that's what good art does. It creates conversation, raises the questions, illuminates the truth in new shades of light. Dennis was a part of our first design conference in 2019 that later launched the Roadcast, and so it was a blast to catch up with him as the world begins to thaw out from this global pandemic. We think of Dennis as our honorary sage in the journey to have inspiring conversations around design, art, and innovation, as these topics often come second nature to Dennis. We know you'll enjoy your time with him as much as we have, and as always, we'll see you down the road. We are here. Roadcast is here at the legendary Dennis Bredo's home. Dennis, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for coming down. It's, uh, it's good to have you. It's so good to like catch up. I mean, thinking through Design Vancouver in 2019 and just our whole endeavor of starting a design conference and you being like really one of the big highlights of that time for a lot of people and then kind of this pivot to Roadcast. It's fun to make it down all the way to Orange County and and be here with you. So thanks for thanks for doing it. Yeah, um, it's an honor to to have you here. I feel like um, Design Vancouver was an amazing experience. I met amazing people. I follow all of them uh, <laughs> to see what they're doing. So I've been keeping tabs on everybody so since then. It's a uh, it's a cool family that I think came out of that. And, yeah. Um, and it's been really. I mean, it's been fun to stay connected, and it's fun to have you Love guys it. here. So, so good. Yeah. I think it would be fun to kind of just start with like you know that theme of like 2019 you know into 2020 and just the world kind of upending yeah um you know and you uh as a creative like the fine art painting side and then also the the side at blizzard uh where you're managing teams of creatives like how has covid been covid allowed me first of all to like completely redo my garage <laughs> Uh, to finish it so it became like a legitimate clean studio space yeah. instead of like where I paint and store my lawnmower. Um, <laughs> so that that was really nice and allowed it to feel like a more creative space for me. So I mean, this is these are the panels that I use. I have a actually a cabinet maker that makes the panels for me. Oh, that's cool. And um, so it's just like a birch veneer. Mm -hmm. um, but this is like the unfinished panel. They're beautiful by themselves. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of a shame I paint all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but they're really nice. The reason I like to work on the wood panel is because it's so heavy. Um, like, it's a heavy material, so I can get it wet, I can sand it, I can scrape on it. Um, I can do a lot of distressing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I'll leave part of that panel showing so that you can see that it's painted on, on wood. On wood, yeah. Um, and the real reason I started painting on panels had nothing to do with what I ended up doing with the work. But like when you paint on a canvas, there's a lot of give. Oh. Um, and I couldn't stand that. It felt like so imprecise to me. A little trampoline so, or something. Yeah, yeah. like, so I huh. really wanted something that felt like the equivalent of drawing on paper because I'm, I'm not really a painter. I'm okay. like, I'm an illustrator. Mm -hmm. like in my painting classes in college, when I started painting, my instructor was like, you're not a painter. And I was like, well, I, that's offensive. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it sounds offensive. She's uh, like, you're, you're an illustrator. I can, you're drawing, you're not painting. Mm. And there is actually a difference. So I am more of an illustrator than a painter. So this medium works for me. Cause okay. It's maybe interesting. More like no, that's super paper. interesting. And then once, once I've worked on that for a little while, um, like this is one I've just, just started. Um, it's it's upside down if you could tell. Yes, totally. We could t please fix that for us. Yes, much yeah, better. Yeah, sorry. That'll be better. 
Um, in this case, I'm not leaving any of the wood exposed, mm -hmm. or, <clears throat> but um, I'm doing a lot of paint, like a heavy layer of paint on this one, and I paint with a trowel. I'll grab it. Yeah, yeah. Um, like at this stage, I'm painting with like a, a tiling or like a grouting trowel. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it forces me to be imprecise. Hmm. Um, because my natural tendency is to control everything. Ah. This is like much harder to control. There's just no way to control it, yeah. So I can blend colors, but it also, it gives me a lot of interesting like shape and texture uh -huh. that feels, uh, it's a little more accidental and I kind of like that as like a structure to build on. Yeah. And I've become more bold. Like I used to like very delicately sand <laughs> with like wet dry sandpaper, yeah. like a thousand grit. And now I just take like a power sander and just, just like go for rip it. it. Yeah. So like yeah. with this painting, I did some paint. Like <clears throat> there's only paint below this line. So this is just old pages from an old Louis L'Amour novel. Okay. On the wood, like you can see the wood underneath. Um, and then the paint is below. So I paint and then I layer in like some old ads you can find some old advertisements in here some phrases that i wanted to keep like make a change for the better mm -hmm. um, i wanted you to see that in the end and then i'll distress all of that then i'll paint the lettering and the cowboy uh. and like in this case this is a good place to see how the sanding works because oh this is where it's like come okay yeah, yeah i paint the whole the whole cowboy is blue okay and then i paint the whole cowboy brown and then sand and then that. i sand super it. cool so i lose some of the some of the book comes off some of the cowboy comes off and then what i'll usually do is go back in and touch it up like like it was an old sign someone came back and like fixed parts of it yeah um so that that's kind of the idea there and then like this stuff looks like it's all stained and old mm -hmm. so when i finish like something like this like on a cowboy one that i want to look really old um i'll actually get the whole thing wet mm -hmm. and just come back on it with paint and like rub all the edges and like stain it so it has kind of like a kind of like mm -hmm. your vignette on Instagram but yeah <laughs> <laughs> right, but, there's you know, so much paint. going on in it I mean and it, it all works together it's deceptively like complete you yeah. know but there are so many different pieces in it you've I think you've kind of hit on what I hope the work does because you want it to have that first read Right? Yeah. Like you want to go like, oh, it's a cowboy painting <laughs> and I'm, go west. That's cool. But if you're going to hang it in your house, like you want a little more, you want to be able to find something in it later. Like I, I want it to, to have some sustainability, right? Like, yeah. like if you're going to live with it. And I mm -hmm. think that's the, the art that I love that I want in my house. I want to come mm -hmm. back to it and go like, oh, I never noticed this piece or this, this element. I want yeah. to find some things in there. And I also want a little bit of like mystery in, in like how it was made. Mm -hmm. Like what was like, how did they do that? Like mm -hmm. which one came first? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, that is a, so. that is a question that it definitely pops out. Just the comment, I have a finite amount of paintings that I'll make mm -hmm. in my life. Like that thought alone is to go, as I think about the time I have or may have, like it is limited mm -hmm. and I'll be able to create specific things. And it feels like, the choices you've made, you know, are really pointed at this place of uh, humorous, ironic, historical, sad, dark, <laughs> you know, ish, you <laughs> right. know, like, but they are all kind of in that same space of tension of mm -hmm. like cowboys and Indians or, you know, the good wife has a model, you know, this figure or the atomic bomb or... It's all very pointed and you're a, a super funny person and smart person, but it also feels like there's a conversation you want to have. Like, I don't know, what is it? Can you dive into like, what is it that is fascinating you about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, it, that could be a way to describe me. Uh, <laughs> funny, sad, <laughs> dark, ironic. I don't know. I think it is a, it's a reflection of, um, what I'm learning, like <laughs> hmm. myself, Okay, you know, I'm like, uh, I grew up in the eighties yeah. and I think I was, I was taught a version of American history that I, I totally bought and was like on board with. I'm, yeah. I'm like, 
Um, and I, uh, I think as I get older and I read more and I look into those things, I'm like, none of the things that I believe were black and white Mm -hmm. are actually black and white. There's so much nuance and there's so much gray area. And it, I think it's, um, it can really shake you some of those things, kind of shake some of the foundations that Mm -hmm. you just things that are like universally true. And it's like, as you meet more people and you talk to people from diverse backgrounds and Mm -hmm. like that didn't grow up the way you grew up, you realize, Oh, like this isn't like a universal truth. Mm -hmm. This is, this was true of me growing up because this, this is what I saw. Yeah. Um, and I think that can be really uncomfortable. Yeah. So I, I want to lean into things that I, I still want to believe are true. Like that everyone in the fifties was happy and, (laughs) drank coke and the families were perfect and yeah. everyone was happy with the role they had to play and and the best thing you could buy your wife for her birthday was a, a new dishwasher you know <laughs> like so and it's like that stuff always struck me as so funny yeah uh until until i had those conversations with my wife or until i'm raising a couple of daughters and yeah. a son and i'm like wait wait a minute These, this is hilarious or super dangerous Uh, and it I think it can be both and I kind of I think (laughs) I'm living in the tension between them (laughs) like I'm sometimes finding things funny and then looking at my daughters and thinking oh not not funny you know um so it's like a it's a challenge to myself to continue to grow yeah um to kind of train my my old self Mm -hmm. while I'm still young (laughs) ish Um, I love that But I think I'm living in that tension. So my work kind of lives Mm -hmm. in that tension. Well, I love the honesty of it, you know, like, you know, advertising was created in the fifties and it's like hard not to like, I mean, you know, infatuated, even shows like Mad Men or whatever it is, there's something about the aesthetic that's like Mm -hmm. even like mid-century modern, like it's just, we're drawn to those sleek, beautiful lines and like this representation that everything's good. And yet it's kind of dark. I don't know. I love the way it just kind of, to me, your paintings just go like this. They just kind of like <laughs> poke you. They're just like, boop, you know, like yeah. there. Uh, and yet there's this like layered complexity. There are Easter eggs there, mm. you know, there's a lot of thoughtfulness, even in terms of the way like your, you know, it's like poster based mm. and yet you're hand painting everything. And there's something about that play as well of going, I'm making this look like it's a poster but I've literally put hours and hours of time into hand painting it. This here, (laughs) so for me, I'm kind of, it's, it's kind of exploring that journey we were talking about of like what I'm learning myself, right? (laughs) Like to me, like who doesn't want a painting of a pretty girl? Yeah. Um, but when you kind of start to pair that with some of the messaging that comes with imagery mm-hmm. of pretty girls, like how's your figure, you know, it's yeah. figure watching time, it's summer. Um, <laughs> then then it, all of it feels like there's a, something about it that's a little sinister yeah, too, totally. right? And um, so it's like, I think we can appreciate things that are beautiful and people that are beautiful. And like, I don't, that's not the danger, but mm-hmm. the danger is what's the messaging behind it. So mm-hmm. what I did with this piece was, put some classic stuff together. Like it, it feels very summery that like these colors, I don't think I've ever used before, yeah. certainly not together, mm-hmm. <laughs> but super cool. something really summery and loud and like super poppy pink, mm-hmm. like very bubble gum, really fun. I wanted the first read to be really playful mm-hmm. and pretty like, um, and then taking the, the life logo, something we mm-hmm. know, something like pairing like a strong graphic with a strong mm-hmm. image. But then underneath I've layered in like a bunch of essentially like weight loss ads, mm-hmm. like the, you can Slim lose weight, soul. like Jaja Gabor and she <laughs> talks you through how she lost all this weight and like she could eat whatever she wants. Yeah. And like, there's a whole thing here about uh, weight loss and don't worry about being hungry or mm-hmm. overeating. Um, you know, like some of these crazy uh, weight loss, like Slim's All, like just finding some of the, the crazy names behind them. And like, 
none of it is like in your face none of it is the first read yeah. but it's all part of the conversation totally um, so with this i'm curious with the technique is that paint uh, are all these ladies painted or is that print or is that <clears throat> yeah they're printed so this is um like a xerox transfer process so essentially what i do is i'm taking a photograph and then i'm manipulating that photograph applying like a half tone like you would see in an old print. Mm -hmm. So if you look really closely, you'll see the whole thing is just like a series of little dots. Same thing with, oh, with yeah. these ladies. Like it's actually like a, almost like a handmade 50s hand uh, half tone pattern. Totally. That's overlaid onto that image. And then the image is printed in reverse and then transferred onto the painting. So- Do you have to get somewhere specific to get that print? Print it out or is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, ideally you would, or you can do it on your home printer and, and like tape 26 pieces of paper together, which is what I did in this case. <laughs> That's awesome though. You can get like a, a yeah, yeah, yeah. any kind of toner print will do it. Mm -hmm. What happens is you use a, like a chemical agent that like holds the toner and then once that's dry, you get it wet and all the paper rubs off. Mm -hmm. So the, the toner stays and the paper is gone. Um, it's a little tedious. What I wanted in this case was I wanted it to look like I had found these ladies like in a newspaper or something. Mm -hmm. So there's like creases and yeah. like a lot of distress. Um, a lot of artists use this technique or something similar. And I wanted to make sure I did s something unique with it or something mm -hmm. that felt consistent with my work. Yeah. So I'm trying to add the distress element so it's not just a straight photograph. Mm -hmm. um, but like with this piece, I found this photo and I was like, I, ha like, I have to do a painting. Mm -hmm. There's like a story here, like they're telling a story. Um, so I just kind of invented the background to go around them. I thought the, I mean, Look Magazine is classic 50s magazine, but it went perfectly with yeah, them. Totally. And then I found some great articles uh, from like women's and girls magazines about like how to flirt with boys, like how, how to get them to meet you without actually asking them. So like get a friend to ask them over for a hot dog roast and then like <laughs> then you can meet them at the party. So just put some of that in there for fun and now it feels like a magazine cover, yeah, but like totally. a giant one you can hang in your house. I you love know? it. The reason I started down this road artistically was because I feel like some of the best art ever created, certainly mm. in the United States, was created in the 50s. Mm. And the greatest illustrators in the country were doing ads for cigarettes and, I mean, they, and, and, you know, the Saturday Evening Post and things yeah, like yeah. that. You look at, like, guys like Rockwell, they were commercial illustrators. Yeah. They were not, like, fine artists, like, mm -hmm. sitting on a mountaintop waiting to be inspired. <laughs> and, like, they were paying their bills doing some of the greatest art that's ever been created. Um, and there was something about the level of craftsmanship and excellence yeah. there that I think um, whatever they were selling, you're like, must be true, right? Yeah. Because like, look how great this looks like and look how happy that family that's is it. with that new television. Like, that's all I need. Yeah. Um, I have a, a French poster in my house um, for Philips television and it, and it literally says in French, and their joy is complete. <laughs> It's a Philips television <laughs> and it's a family unboxing a TV and you're like, well, oh, that's okay, so good. a little over the top maybe, but like, if and you see it, you're like, complete. yeah, but look how happy they are, you know? It's true. Um, little so TV. when I started painting, my paintings literally were just, just a celebration of that craftsmanship. Like I'm just going to okay. paint like the mobile oil logo because I think it's one of the best pieces of design hmm you know, and it was for a gas station, but it's like a beautifully crafted piece of graphic design. Yeah. And I think as my work evolved, um, I realized like, oh, there's like more complexity to what's happening. There's something behind this. Mm -hmm. And so like, even as I painted more and more of, like I've done a lot of paintings mm -hmm. of, of the mobile Pegasus, like mm -hmm. it's just yeah, a recurring yeah. theme. Um, but then I would just like, include a statement in there like use more oil you know <laughs> like <laughs> like uh the there's a there's like a candor to 1950s advertising that's so in your face that mm. i think that's why it makes us laugh yeah the the danger is the message is the same message we're telling people now but now it's like super subtle right it's Ooh. like 
um, we're saying the same thing to young women now that we were saying then. Like, come on, shape up. Like, it's time to look out for your figure. Summer's coming, right? Um, but we wouldn't say that now. That's rude. We'll just we'll just show you pictures or and pictures and pictures and pictures. Represent, right? yeah. like we'll 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 just make you feel that subconsciously Ooh, without yeah. saying it out loud, which I think is worse. Yeah. Um, I this really hit me when I was going through, I have stacks and stacks of old life magazines. Oh yeah. This is a great, yeah, go. Um, and I was going through looking for ideas and I just kept coming up on these ads. Like, you know, are you, are you too thin? Like eat this wheat paste and fill out. But then on the next page, it's like, or are you too heavy? Like you can chew this chewing gum and lose weight or lose weight to music or <clears throat> buy this sling for your face and wear it at night. If you have an unpleasant <laughs> jawline or like, <clears throat> or here's a, like a corset that will make you look like all the women you see in, in mm. the ads or, I mean, it was like, there's so much of it. I think out of four magazines, mm -hmm. I pulled enough ads to cover multiple times, like a full 36 inch by 36 inch panel, it, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. I just covered the whole thing with these advertisements of mm -hmm. all the ways you, you're not right. And the mm -hmm. one that the real kicker for me was a picture of a woman crying and it said, dinner alone again, the woman to blame may be yourself. Oh my God. And it was an <laughs> ad for mouthwash. Oh my God. And it's like, well, you're having dinner by yourself because you have bad breath. Right? Oh, my God. And it was like. That's horrible. Oh, my word. That's this amazing. Is like, this is the most horrifying thing, right? And it was like, just straight shame. We were just shaming people. Yeah. It was like, you know what? Let's just shame people into buying stuff. It's like, hey, like, like yeah, truth stinks. Truth and advertising, right? It's like, <laughs> we're just saying, hey, this is tough love. Right? Um, oh, my God. So buy Listerine. Yeah. If you don't want to eat dinner by yourself Dude, again. Fear. Right? Yeah. So what I did on that painting, it's just covered in these messages and then in huge letters over the top, it just says, maybe it's you. Like, maybe mm -hmm. you're the problem, right? Yeah. Like, and to try to, I think, start to have a conversation about these things. I think that's, that was when my work switched from being, I'm going to paint cool old yeah. logos from the 50s and like, actually, let's have a conversation about some of these things. And because yeah. um, some of this is not okay. Yeah, I think it's fat. I love it because it is, it's. Like we've said it, but the tension of wanting to just believe because of the craftsmanship and the beauty, mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a cool painting. And then you're like, uh, <laughs> what, what is this saying for real? Yeah. I'm glad you touched on that just in terms of how you source your inspiration. Like, you know, are there other ways? I mean, mm -hmm. we've talked about reading, flipping through these old magazines, yep. you know. The magazines to me have been, <clears throat> I mean, I follow a lot of artists mm. online. I mean, Instagram has been like the greatest thing for art ever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess first maybe Facebook, but Instagram for me has been a huge source of inspiration and a great place to connect with other artists. Like mm. I'm, I'm friends with artists around the world that I've never met, but we carry on conversations about art and cheer each other on, That's get excited great. about like this artist got a show. And it's, you know, you see a community of artists that have come around them, like, mm -hmm. so excited. Like, none of us can attend. We don't live anywhere near there, but it's just, it's exciting to see. Um, so I think being inspired by other artists is a huge part of it. Part of what I've enjoyed with my work is including some of those physical pieces in the painting. So layering oh, I love that. Yeah, portions yeah, yeah. of those old ads or statements or articles into the painting. Because to me, there's like an element of that that feels like a, a preservation yeah. of the past, yeah. you know, like um, in my garage, it's gonna sit and rot, but like I can put in a painting, I can it's cover there. it in resin yeah. and like it, it's there, like it's gonna be there for someone else to see, um, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe just my kids, I don't know, but um, <clears throat> to me yeah, there's I'm something, sure. there's something special about being able to preserve some of those things. Yeah literally have it in there i love that maybe we talk about like this this series like you did a a series of like the alphabet is that right yeah or is it like it's a series of flashcards. Flashcards. um and i i did not do the whole alphabet i i did like a through g and the whole idea was to do like 
fun children's flashcards. <laughs> <laughs> They're a series of prints, so this is the by far the largest size, yeah. um, which felt appropriate for this particular one. But um, it's a series of like fun flash cards for kids, all all kind of based on this '50s nostalgia, but all like a little twisted. So it's like um, you know, A is for atomic bomb, uh, C is for cocktail. It's just like a woman with a martini. Um, D is for debt. And it's uh, like a, a family that's like good. buying their first house. Oh, and, you know, the, the yeah. happy family in their first like oh, I uh, love that. atomic house, you yeah, know, like the yeah. whole thing. But just like a little twist on like that eternal optimism of the 50s yes. by taking like a, a kid's thing and turning it into s s kind of a snarky commentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got to what? D? E? I got to G. To G. <laughs> um, so uh, someday I'm going to finish the whole series. Yeah. Um, I, I could use some ideas. <laughs> I started to run out of ideas. H is for hell. And um, <clears throat> yeah, there no. you go. <laughs> like G is for gossip. It's like the classic kind of woman on the telephone yeah. kind of thing. Like just some of those um, like ideas that are always like we talked about. It's like a in the, the marketing twist is it's always something pleasant. But mm -hmm. the reality of it is a little bit different. Yeah. You know? So I mean, this is the this is the generation that lived through the atomic age. So. Mm -hmm. This is their reality. Um, not shifting, but maybe like kind of some comparing and contrasting to one. It's it's cool to hear you say like I like Instagram mm -hmm. because of this reason. I connect with other artists. Where it's also increasingly you hear like it's a difficult platform to mm -hmm. like just be on because it's just the content isn't great. You know, yeah. there's still the sharing, but there's other things happening there. On you know that maybe detract from just that nature of sharing and stuff. Um, but having your hands just so closely, you know, involved in analog, this analog discipline of painting. And then what you do for Blizzard, I mean, it's cinematics and a lot of that is painting digitally. Um, and I just love to hear you maybe talk about like the differences, the similarities, mm -hmm. you know, to those two disciplines and is there an overlap and, I don't know. I think it's interesting. Yeah, it's um, digital painting is an amazing sort of like evolution mm -hmm. to to the field of art. I mean, it's not like new, but I think it's increasingly. <clears throat> I think it's lowered the barrier of entry, right? Okay. So, um, like a lot of people maybe don't think of themselves as an artist, but they're like, well, I got an iPad and an Apple Pen only cost me a hundred bucks and there's this cool sketch program, you know? Yeah. So I like to doodle. I think a lot of people discount their art or their artistic nature because it's like, well, I don't, I don't do this professionally mm -hmm. or whatever, but I feel like the technology has lowered the barrier of entry for more people mm. to like pursue that passion. And I'm, I'm continually like surprised and encouraged at the number of people who, um, who are like, oh yeah, like I sketch in my free time. Like, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, I sell insurance or whatever, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I sketch in my free time on my iPad because the tools are fantastic. Um, and it's, it's not a massive investment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something I can do while I watch Netflix, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's easy. Um, I, so I think the, in that sense, it's opened it up to a lot more people. Hmm. Um, I also think that the tool makes some things that were really difficult now much easier. So because you can manipulate photos and you can do all of these things, um, you can get to a result much quicker mm -hmm. digitally. Mm -hmm. And it's a very forgiving medium. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there really isn't anything that you can't like back out of. Yeah. So it, you can be pretty cavalier in your approach to things. Like I'm just going to try this. Yeah. If it doesn't work, I'll just turn it off or mm -hmm. turn it down or move it. Or mm -hmm. um, None of those things apply to like traditional painting. Like there, there's like a commitment in traditional painting and there, there is no undo. Mm -hmm. So what I found is um, I very quickly moved into the digital world out of college uh, and did that almost exclusively for 10 or 15 years. And then when I came back to doing traditional painting and illustration, like I had done in school and, mm -hmm. uh, I literally found myself thinking undo, like, <laughs> <laughs> like trying to push like the canvas. Like, is like, there a button on this canvas? <laughs> I didn't want to do that. And like, 
I become so cavalier in my approach yes, to painting because I can like try it and take it off, try it and take it off until it's just right. And all of a sudden there was like a, a nervousness that came with like physically painting something mm. because like I, I can't take it back. Like once I commit. do it, I'm committed. And I've kind of like, um, I guess I've, I've accelerated that a little bit in my own work or raised that bar a little bit with some of the work that I do where I'm painting on top of old magazines or pages out of a book or yeah. something like that. Like you can't go out of the lines because you can't take it back. You've now actually like altered something you meant to preserve and keep. So in, in digital painting, you never throw anything away. Like you continue to improve it. You may set it aside, but you never have to be like, Oh, I can't use this. Yeah. But I've literally taken a painting that I've spent 20 hours on Ooh. and thrown it in the trash <clears throat> because I tried to print something on top of it at the end and it leaked all over and ruined it, you know? And I think to me, that's like, there's like a nervous energy that comes yeah. from that. Um, but there's also like a pride in yeah. the finished product because of that. Like, Oh, I made it to the end without, without messing it up. Yeah. Um, and I think I've also learned to adapt a little bit and realize like, oh, you can recover from a lot of things, yeah. even in the sort of traditional paint yeah. world, you know. Depending on how specific the idea is, I probably do like five to 10 comps in Photoshop until it's like, yep, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. So like this one, I knew right away what I wanted and I just mocked it up and found it pretty quick. For this one, I was like looking for something that felt like it went with this piece and I was really struggling to figure it out. So like grabbing pieces from old paintings I hadn't done, like old mock-ups in Photoshop, like the stripes. I've tried the stripes on like four different paintings. I'm like, this looks dumb. Yeah. But on this one, I was like, oh, it's actually kind of cool. So here's all these, all these layers I have. So like I have the stripes, but I tried, um, here, let me turn the life off too. Oh, I've got a pink stripe in there too. Where's that coming? I have too many layers now. Cause I just, like I like to be pretty careful about how I approach this stuff, but after a while I'm just throwing stuff on it to see what'll stick. So I, I tried the stripes over the whole thing. I tried like big fat stripes just in three colors, like in every possible direction like lots of different color combinations. And some of these I've used in other paintings, or sometimes I've tried just dividing the image into a couple colors. Um, and then of course, I'm also trying that with like, or maybe a solid color, but heavily like uh, distressed. But then I'm also trying that with like, you know, could I use a pattern? Um, like finding old wallpaper and seeing like if I could find a pattern in there or just using a different image all oh, right those are the ads so obviously i have i have her in there but i've also tried like a bunch of other photographs that i could possibly use um a lot of these are left over from from other paintings and the theme of that painting was like the phrase you're more than just a pretty face so <clears throat> I did a bunch of ads and then an image of all these women, but all of them had their faces removed. And it's kind of like a backhanded compliment. Like you're more than just a pretty face. Like there's other ways we can objectify you other than just your face, right? So I'd done a couple of those. Um, I tried, the life idea actually came because, because the stripes made me think of like old candy packaging or something like that. So I tried one maybe where I would use lifesavers as the um as the basis for this and then kind of have the swimming motif um, but that just felt a little bit too complicated but i did try one with like something like this and then maybe putting the um adding the girl on top like something like that so yeah, I mean, and I don't even know what this one is. Oh yeah, so here's like, I don't know if I actually executed this one, but this is like one of the many other comps I did for this type of painting. And you'll see the same thing. Like um, this is it's like a two gigabyte Photoshop file. And it's actually not that 
large. It's just like hundred ideas in there of like different ways to compose these things. And I find this so fast, you know, in a couple hours I can have six or seven pretty solid ideas and then I can decide which one I want to actually like execute on. So we were talking to Joel West on this trip and he was talking about midnight. They call it the Cinderella and the pumpkin, like has an idea and thinks it's the greatest idea. And it's like midnight and you just think you've just saved the world and you wake up in the morning and you're like, <laughs> wow, that is not as good as I thought it was at right. midnight. Um, but constantly getting that objectivity. I remember that too from your talk of like surrounding yourself with people that you trust for mm -hmm. feedback and to push in, to lean into that feedback, to lean into that objectivity, you know, to kind of wait for it. Um, yeah, I just love how delicate a balance it is, you know, when you're creating something that's so personal, at the same time, like you want it to be refined and as good as you can, yeah. as good as it can be. You know? Yeah, and I think the, the people part of it is really important because um, I wouldn't have even started painting for myself mm -hmm. if I hadn't been encouraged to do that by other artists that I was close with and it started as kind of like a for fun thing as an experiment <clears throat> but I found that every time I was working on a painting uh, and I showed it to somebody it got better mm. like I'd have a friend that would give me advice and say like this painting needs white and I'm like that's not even that doesn't make sense it has nothing to do with the painting but then if you step back and you look at it and you're like, oh, I, I get it. Like he's looking at it with fresh eyes. And what he's saying is like th these values are too compressed. You got like something's got to pop out mm. of this. Right. Yeah. Uh, I just I wasn't thinking about that because I'm thinking about the message or I'm thinking about the, the cowboy or the whatever I'm painting on there. Mm. Um, and sometimes I think that perspective is so helpful because you get you get really focused and dialed in yeah. on one thing and you're missing something completely different. And sometimes I think that feedback comes and um, I disagree with it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I actually, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But that is just as helpful because it kind of confirms my own choices. Like mm -hmm. I have an option to do something different here and I'm choosing not to do something different here um, for this reason. And at least then I feel like, well, it didn't happen by accident. I had the conversation, I had the choice to change it, and I, I kept it for this reason. So I think it, in both cases, that feedback, it either changes the painting for the better, or it maybe changes my perception of the painting for the better. Yeah. Um, and both are of equal value. I love it. Thanks for being on Roadcast. Thanks for being in our corner. Uh, it feels there's something just, something that's always really inspiring about talking to you, um, getting inside your process in your head. Um, that's just super valuable and just grateful to have the conversation and yeah, fun to chat. Thank you. Thanks for the conversation and thanks for letting me be a part of the roadcast. Like yeah. to me, it's really special. It feels, I feel very privileged. Um, and it's, it's fun to have a conversation about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like I'm, I feel a little desperate to have these conversations, like not myself, but to listen in on them. Yeah. I think so to be invited into that and have a place for that. To me, it's cool. important. Thanks. So thanks for making the space for it. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.